Ba, Africa family. What's going on? What's good? It's saying, I have a special person that came into our room recently. Please, let me introduce the fierce, the queen boss, the absolutely beautiful Ya Young Heart. We had the opportunity to meet this fabulous, fabulous young lady, and then we thought, why not interview each other? Anyone that knows me personally knows I'm about my business, and I like people who are about their business. So let this queen inspire you. Ya will take us on a visual tour of her life and what she's up to these days. So, Empacho, get your fancy fingers, hop on over to our YouTube, and watch this video. We just, no, it's a preview. Come sit with it's you. a preview. <laughs> yeah, it's a preview. Yeah, no, sure. Is it recording? Is good? Yeah, it's recording. Hi, my lovely people. Hope you're all doing well. It's your girl, Yeah. And yes, we are back with a lovely new video 2021. Consistency is key. So today, as usual, you know your girl Ya is always out and about, trying to find new things, meeting new people. So I have a gem for you today, guys, a real gem. So I'm at a place, you might have seen it if you follow me on Instagram, a place called Sikada, Sikada, which means money every day. Money day. Money day. But money every day too is good. <laughs> And it's a beautiful, I like to call it like a little hideaway, a little gem. So it's uh, my pleasure to have the proprietors, as they like to say in Ghana, oh, okay. the owners, you know, the bosses, the executives here with me. And we're going to have a really good heart to heart chit chat about here, about them being in Ghana. Guys, come on in. Come on in. Coming in. Baby, can you help Are you in? Yeah, I'm in. I'm right here. Is, is, Are you is, coming? Is she gonna be in? Yeah. Should she be in the middle, maybe? No, no, I'll be here. Be you sure? I'm gonna Are we here. all in? Then maybe you have to be. position a little. Yeah. I'll help you. Cool. cool. Brilliant. Good. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Nice. So, guys. Aquaba, I don't know who is Aquaba, if it's me Aquaba here or you Aquaba, uh, but anyway, all of us, all of us are, all are Aquaba. All of us are Aquaba to Ghana. Introduce yourself, guys. Okay, so um, my name is Aria, which literally means the sun or afternoon. And uh, I'm a Ghanaian, I was born in Azim and I grew up in Takradi and I lived in Accra for some time before I get a chance to travel to Japan for the past 14 years. Wow. So over there, I met my beautiful queen, and her name is. Hello, everyone. My name is Kiko, and I am African American and Japanese. I am from California, but I'm a motherland girl. I ditched the divided states of the KKK, <laughs> and I went to uh, I went to Japan, which is one of my motherlands. And then I returned to the mother motherland, which is here. And uh, yes, uh, when I was in Japan, I met my husband, and now we're here. Cool. Yeah. Cool, where we're cool, supposed cool. To be. Yes, <laughs> where we're supposed to be. Yes. So how I even got here was um, just in the area with a friend, and obviously, you know, Ghana can smell the aroma of food. I was like, oh, this looks nice. Came in, and the ambience. I have the footage, so I'll insert it in the video. Just a very serene, nice place, cool, very homely. That's the first impression I got, oh, was nice you. and yeah. homely. Excellent customer service, really did. I'm not just saying this because they're there, seriously. You know, Ghana, it's not, good to, it's not easy to get customer service at all. Yeah. So if you get it, you have to shout it out. So yeah, guys, so let's start from why. Why Ghana? Why? Why everything? You first. Okay, thank you. The vision, you know, everything. Yeah. Let's just um, let let's let it flow. Or do you want me to start? Why not? Okay. Okay. Say for me, for not? me, I'll just start for myself. Yeah, cool. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm a motherland girl, but I grew up predominantly black. Mm -hmm. So my mother is black, and my grand 
my grandparents, my African American grandparents raised me. And just the way that they taught and raised me and taught us about our black history and then how we got there was really important to me. We learn about so, uh, many unfortunate things that have happened to us mm -hmm. from the outside. Mm -hmm. And so when I was young, I knew I would never be living. I knew I'd never be living. <laughs> sorry. I knew I'd never be living in the United States of America. I just didn't think that was a place for me. I did end up going to Japan, but when I was in Japan, there was something else like heavy on my shoulders, and I just kept thinking, I just think I need to go home, and that means here to Africa, but I didn't know where because we've been stolen. We were stolen and we were subjected into slavery. And so I didn't know where. And I feel a little bit embarrassed to say this, but I started to look up South Africa. <laughs> Which is still on the continent though, it's to be still fair. on the continent, but it's not where I should have been starting. Okay. But it's a start, okay, it all the same. <laughs> But then, okay, so to just hone it into one thing, I believe that we are powerful people. We are smart people. We had so much taken away from us. And I believe that we should take our talents back home to the motherland and just be strong. And, uh, and I think we can flourish from there. There's so many things that we can do. There's so many opportunities that we have here. I believe it's important for those who know who your lineage, lineage is, because not all skin folk are kin folk, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. true. And those people can keep their behinds over there. <laughs> but for the rest of y'all black people, take your ass back, back home to the motherland. This is where we belong. So, so for me, Africa, obviously, motherland, we need to get back here. So you kind of just went South Africa. Yeah, first I went South Africa, even though I knew it was wrong. And then, I, I shouldn't say it's wrong, but I know that my lineage is West African. I just didn't know where to start. And so I started there, but also I'm there. But then I came up with a really cool idea, which my husband okay. and I will do in the future. But I thought, why don't we be the first black people to have a, a wine, to start a winery? in West Africa. Okay, but anyways, going back to how I met my husband, I was conflicted, then I magically met my husband one day, and he just happened to be Ghanaian, and he also happened to be coming back home. And I but happened, this was in Japan, This right? was when we were oh, living okay. in Japan. Okay. So he said uh, he had this idea of wanting to work for himself, and I'm a firm believer of working for myself, even though I'm half Japanese, they don't consider me one of them, and also working there under the kind of conditions that they work, it doesn't match my the, key, the country of yeah. Kiko, yeah. it doesn't match my country. So uh, I used to think that I need to start working for myself, and then I had met my husband who also wants to work for himself. You want to take the then, button now? There you go. Yes, you give me the chance. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I was in digital marketing as sommelier. My husband's a chef. Oh. And we just decided to combine Guys, our can I together. just say yeah. at this point, this guy, you know one thing that really impressed me? Obviously, he's the, the boss, yes. whatever you want to call it. Thank I you. came, this guy was pounding for food. Yes. I was like, this is such good work ethic, I you know? I had to do it to teach the audience on Yeah, how, but it was do. so impressive because normally you, in Ghana, you see the boss with his legs crossed, right. you know, in the corner somewhere, just counting the money. But to see you actually in action, it really impressed me. Oh, so thank you. That's, that's a good recommendation. But take over. Yeah, so, so how yeah. it all started, thank you, uh, my beautiful ladies, <laughs> both left and the right. <laughs> <laughs> So how we all started, um, uh, back there in Japan, or even in all my life, I've been wishing to work for myself. But as to when and where and how. So back there in Japan, I was really working hard, trying to put some little equipment and money and ideas together so that I can get this started. Then along the line, I met my wife and uh, one fateful 
first January. I don't want to call the, the name of the year. The, 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 the year. I hope it wasn't 2020. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that, maybe yes. Oh, God. <laughs> that year. Yeah, anyway, so, moving on. So this fateful um, first January morning, and then we were walking to my, to my place of work, a restaurant. And then she was telling me an idea that she wanted to do it. And it's all about how she wants to live in a compound where she has her office and, and her workplace and like work from home and do her own job. And I was like, she seemed to have the idea that I have. So then we get into deeper talking and we realize that we click so much that we can do it together. Same vision. Yeah. Same vision. So we have to analyze the things that we want to do and then put them from like one, two, three up to how many numbers that we have. And we realize that we, we can start, yeah, we can start with maybe a restaurant. But the restaurant asks to which of the restaurant I want, what kind of food. So we came up with a, a Ghanaian cuisine mm. that we can put a twist in it. Mm. I mean, make it look much better and mm. presentable. Mm. So that's how we came up with this uh, idea, idea of Ghanaian cuisine and okay. this kind of set setup that we have. So you decided that the Ghana cuisine would be more something that you could get yourself into pretty quickly. Yeah, I think so because even why not Japanese? No. Because, <laughs> no. because we're on the motherland exactly. and we're Ghanaian, mm -hmm. so we need to, but people, and you'll explain more, yeah. people don't see African, Africa as a continent al along with other, the other countries of African cuisine. Mm -hmm. It's overlooked. You hear about French cuisine, yeah. Italian uh, cuisine, things like that. Okay. People, so it's important, so I'll let you take over. Yeah, so, um, thank you. So like. Uh, when we were thinking about it, we thought, like myself, I've been a chef for the past 18 years. So I really think I have some kind of experience that I can do something. But um, we we starting from Ghana and 99% of our customer base are Ghanaian. Mm. So why not do something for that the Ghanaian uh, uh, population can consume? Even the ordinary uh, Ghanaian. Yeah, ordinary Ghanaian yeah. can consume and feel better. I mean, feel confident or happy coming to their own place oh, where yeah. they can have it. Their so own they, food. Yeah, their yeah. own food. So that's why we decided It's to good. Do this. It is really good. Because yeah. I think for a lot of people, I mean, I'm generalizing, but I think when people think of restaurants, you know, coming from abroad, yeah. they probably assume that you're gonna do, I don't know, yeah. something non Ghanaian, yeah. let me and, put it like that. Yeah. And the thing, like, they have a name to call it like a continental cuisine. Which is what we don't like Which, to say, but we kind of say. I, I think I want to disagree with the word continental. Yeah. My simple reason is this if you give a chicken to um, a, a Chinese chef, when he finished cooking, you call it Chinese dish. Mm. If you give it to a British or even an American, you call it American dish or mm. British dish. So why, if me being a Ghanaian cook it, you want to call my style a Something continental? Yeah. So why don't true. you call it Ghanaian? Yeah. Because we are all chefs. Right? Yeah, yeah, true. I understand Anyway, that. so that's the reason why we chose to do the, the Ghanaian cuisine, mm. for which we think we can put a twist in it to do it in a way that we suit every nationality, mm. especially Can I Ghanaian. just ask, yeah. I've been coming to Ghana for everybody, everybody I, my famous saying, since the year dot, I've okay. been coming to Ghana. Yeah. And when you were planning it, did you kind of envisage, cause Ghana, let's say chop bar, as okay. we know it, yeah. chop bar is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So did you not think, or did you not hesitate that you coming in with Ghanaian food, the market might be saturated because chop bar is here everywhere. If you're talking about local, it's just my inquisitiveness, if you like. His answer is no, even though he's thinking. I think the answer is no. <laughs> and okay. I also think it's yes anyhow, because yeah, there are too many of it outside. Mm -hmm. But if I want to use any country, for example, if you go to such countries like maybe let me use japan for example mm. there are too many uh, japanese restaurants mm, but still do, but still get, they, they are true, true, they get customers true. It's so true. it's all about what you do and how you how you do play, it play actually yeah how you do system. it because there can be so many but maybe the way you do it the way you yeah. deliver exactly. yeah. even the ambience like i said yeah. i took so many pictures here guys check out my instagram like 
it's so it's like so serene it's like got this nice it's simple even the table look natural Little, resources yeah. and stuff okay guys so we've got a little bit of the background okay. so like moving on you're here now yeah. you've set up let's just hit let's just go straight into it challenges okay everybody talks about the challenges so, That's yeah, yeah you know that yeah. i mean let's keep it real you know guys i always like to keep it real it's a nice concept beautiful but let's know about the underground stuff so you want to go yeah okay how about i say it and then you can yeah like one, yeah. Each, yeah. one each yeah. one each would be ahead, really yeah. cool so i'll start the one thing we didn't anticipate was finding the the way in which you find a house in ghana that was epic so, so yeah how we find a house um we got here and then we had we decided to stay in a Airbnb. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice place in uh, uh, Ghana. Okay. Sometimes you could put the. So you the came link straight there, from where? From Japan. Ja straight yeah. to an straight Airbnb. To, uh, Airbnb. Yes. Okay. Hoping to get a house within a week or two. Uh -huh. Believe me, it took us two months. <gasps> guys, we were paying guys, twenty dollars. Take a note. Day. Yes. That's a very valid yeah. point. Yes. And That's a very seriously, it wiped a huge chunk of our capital sure. away. Yeah, we, did. we did okay yeah. we didn't think it was going to take such a long time but keep in mind 20 okay so online it said 20 dollars i don't know that's like 100 and like, yeah, kind of, 17 dollars yeah. is about 100 anyways mm. that's relatively in, inexpensive but for that amount of time, time yeah, yeah. yeah. Is expensive. and especially since you it need in a hotel yeah, yeah true ahead. but okay. especially since the plan was to hit the ground running, yeah, running well yeah. start the business sure, yeah. so you don't want to be spending exactly so so why did it take so long um one of it because the agency system that operates these houses that, mm. that that take people to look for it it's not really organized mm -hmm. and then you go to a house that maybe a home but let me call it a house not a home if there's no one living there mm -hmm. but and they're taking you such amount of money like maybe four thousand two hundred and that's not even mm -hmm. five thousand five thousand cities and the environment doesn't look habitable yeah mm -hmm. and it's it's not clean it's not organized the place is dirty mm -hmm. and then they are showing you that that such a house for you to pay five thousand mm. dollars for it, it's really, really close. Yeah. So, so keep, it, yeah, I yeah, get you because I running. feel, I feel it's a big, big issue. Housing yeah. in general yeah, in Ghana, yeah, yeah. Accra. Let me not even say Ghana, but yeah. I'm talking about Accra. Is is insane in the sense, like you said, yeah. the pricing, the quality of the house, and even if you do get what you want, their price is extortionate. It's, 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 yeah, and then they want to get like two, three years mm. like money advance. Which takes all your capital your away. Capital, yeah. So you pay for search and then you realize you can't do anything. Okay. You don't want to get a house to live because if it's about living, you wouldn't be yeah, that place. Yeah, okay. So that's how it took us such a long time to get it. Okay, so but, housing was one challenge. Yes. Then another challenge. Another challenge was um, uh, punctuality in Ghana. <laughs> people tell you they want to be there at nine o'clock remember they are moving from the house at nine o'clock of course and it's, if the journey is like three hours mm -hmm. journey to get to where your to meeting be. point mm -hmm. it means that nine o'clock he's saying is like 11 or 12 o'clock in the right. afternoon because mm -hmm. they keep in mind they probably took the church to get to exactly. yeah and then traffic yeah. and traffic is, yeah. and yeah. so many things so punctuality yeah. time keeping time keeping yes and you get the place and you have to run it like the one we have our bigger challenge is electricity Ooh. it's fucking way expensive it's really good it is expensive we put about 50 or more every day maybe 70 okay so that way. in terms i'm i'm a i'm a brit so 70 is roughly like nine to ten pounds or even you can just check it on yeah. the and that might exchange seem expensive nine to ten because when i trans uh when i change it to us dollars it sounds cheap but here in but ghana, on a daily basis yeah. Yeah. so it's expensive yeah, yeah. and yeah. also like i always say when you're in ghana you have to think cities exactly, exactly. Yeah. because if you think oh it's just ten dollars 
you, then you everything wrong. seems cheap. Yeah. 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 But you're in Ghana. But you ten dollars even looks cheap. But paying the same amount for mm. money for a long period of time, it's, it's money. Not cheap. Ten dollars is cheap. cheap. But then when you look at your pocket and you see minus negative yeah. zeros, it's, 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 it's not cheap. cheap. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. Not cheap. So electricity is, is a challenge, it's right? A challenge. And obviously yeah. you guys are running a, a restaurant yeah. and eatery. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not it's not like you can compromise. Sure. Even daily living, you can't compromise. Can, yeah. But to be clear about the electricity, it's because there's actually something faulty. Yeah, in the case of system. ours, and we, they said yeah. something faulty, but they're not gonna fix it. The uh, the electricity workers will come around. I'm calling them out. Yeah, if they hey. hear me. They get the calling you out guys if you're watching this if you're watching this ecg get your ass together yeah. drop me a comment down below Seriously. let's hear from you they will come to check your meter and they mm -hmm. say there's something wrong with it yeah. but they are interested to increase the tariffs but not interested to fix that what, what is right. wrong which is not good yeah you can't do us a service by 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 killing us yeah you guys should put your eyes together because i believe you can do something better yeah and don't always look up to the west to say they are the one that does it better we can also do yeah, it better. 100 yeah. percent. it's a mindset because it's Absolutely. possible it's a mindset yeah. we need to change our mindset yeah. also because the thing that always gripes me is you know the government you know re year of return everybody come home you know exactly. motherland yeah. let's do this guys yeah. you know but infrastructure let's get it sorted like you're saying electricity you know people are coming from the west i'm not trying to say the west is perfect but there are certain standards that we're used to serious so when we come here at least meet us halfway or a bit higher oh, but like can i tell you that's what i mean about my conversation earlier they still they've stolen the foundation from us then yeah. they did their own thing yeah. to make it seem better. Yeah, but, but yeah. So we have the capability of doing it to make yeah, it. Yeah, but in this case, it's not about what they've stolen. At least we have electricity. Let's fix it. Yeah. Because look, if you, I don't want to keep calling other countries, for example. But what is really interesting here in Ghana is that the house we rented, someone has lived here before, and the meter is in her name. Yeah, still to this day. It's to, to tomorrow. Man. The and meter we, is we in live, her name, we, we, and we go to a bank, want to open a bank account, they say, go and bring your, your utility, utility bill. bill. Yeah. And it's the name of someone. You go to ECG to say you want to change it. No, 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 keep it like that. Don't touch it. Uh, That's what they tell us. You yeah. see, these are, this these, crazy. Are some, these are some of the... Okay, so you've highlighted a few annoying challenges. Let's lift the mood yes. a little. Yeah. Because, Thank you know, you. at the yeah, end of the day, yeah, yeah. still home. What can sure, we do? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. If we say we're going to talk about the challenges, this video is going to. Uh, ba my battery back. is going to just yeah, die. Sure. So, <laughs> but there's many beautiful what's things. What's the beautiful too. things, boss? Um, beautiful things. I think one of the most beautiful things that I can ever get in Ghana <laughs> is like. His phone is going off. Is Businessman, you know, nothing, nothing stops <laughs> when business is running. Yeah, so one of the most beautiful things I can find in Ghana is that at least, no matter how late it, it is in the night, I will not be walking, looking back, thinking someone is going to pull a gun at me. Oh, wow. And I really feel at home. Wow. And no one is like, I don't feel discriminated. Cool. Seriously. Yeah. Anywhere I go, they accept me to yeah. be who I am. 100%. Yeah, 100%. I need to clap That's that really one. great yeah. for. You're yeah. home. You're it's, really it's home. home. Like, yeah. really home. Exactly. Not just. If anything home. goes wrong, and this is a recommendation, I mean. I'm saying hi to my police friends. <laughs> if anything We're doing goes a lot of like shout any, outs today. Yeah, <laughs> any any traffic uh, disorder or stuff like that, you can talk. You tell uh, your brother, yeah, you can you tell your brother how you went wrong and they kind of understand you. So basically yeah. it's not like the states where they pull you over they pull and you, you over don't and even know. You have no right yeah, and then you're now. a hot topic in the news. Yeah, yeah, or your headline, or your yeah, breaking sure. and news. Then, yeah. and then, you're not then there's all of a sudden there's yeah. a Black Lives Matter movement, yeah, movement going on. Movement and stuff. This one you, they this talk one. to you. Yeah. At some point they will advise you you don't do this because yeah. you Yeah, you can you can see the other person beside you as a friend or yeah, a brother or a sister, brother. Or, fellow fellow yeah, man as like, it's supposed yeah, sure. to be. You walking in the street for the first time you meet someone he says hi. Yeah. You know it's not like I've lived in a block for about eight years and. No one ever greeted me yeah. in that place. So you they really, you really genuinely feel yeah. like you're home. You feel like so you're home. Over to you. I have to say everything my husband said. Of yeah. course, my experience is a little bit different because... Oh, yeah. of some How 
what is colorism in Ghana? Oh, that's a good that's one. What I was going to. Colorism. You have ah. this thing in Ghana where, excuse me to say, Bruni. Yes. Oh. Our Bruni. But those who don't know what Bruni means, it's the white person. The white person. It's yeah. the fair color or yes. the white. Yeah. So we have this thing in Ghana where, sorry to say, it still it really annoys me. Where we kind of like, hey, Bruni is yes. the best. We worship them. We worship lick, them. Lick their asses. And all sorry that. that so you been let's say fairer fairer yes. because you are black american but you are of a fairer complexion yes. so what's your experience let's call it colorism it is And one other thing is because we tend to worship or kind of sing all the praises for the white skinned people, you will imagine that two of us are in a car driving, and then I don't say I have all the money or she has all the money, but they will pass by me and then beg money from me. And I will, okay, so that's what I wanted to get to. Yeah. That makes me super angry. That just because I'm like skinned, so don't they know they I don't know what I'm doing. maybe we're looking for a house yeah. if i go there alone they say mm, for example a yeah. uh, hundred ghana city or maybe a thousand ghana city mm. once she comes oh. it's a thousand dollars so can i tell you how many times i don't go with him it's, it's that one I, understand. So I don't like that and it makes me irritated because first of all they're calling me white and i ain't white i find that offensive number two don't praise me don't speak to me on the street because you think i'm one of those people because i'm not number three why don't we learn to love ourselves? Because it's the reason why you don't love yourself enough that you didn't even have the sense to come speak to my mm. husband first or my sister mm. first. You know, my child. It's, 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 it's all wrong. It's and all mixed up. And then think of it also then, that they hype the price because, because, because like she, she looks like this. And it makes me really irritated. You know, I always yeah. say, I always tell, I mean, I'm a Ghanaian. Mm. I always tell Ghanaians that, look, don't I have the same thing? I might have the darker color, but I have the accent. accent. And then they'll do so. They they'll initially they can be very kind of like, uh, uh, yeah. but if you open your mouth, then everything, everything changes. Everything go wrong, yeah. And I've had so many situations where I'm like, right, I'm gonna teach these people. I normally lesson. go in with the English, so I, see? I just testing them, yeah. prices, everything is sky high. Then Come switch back, to yeah. the tree. Mm -hmm. I don't, <laughs> yeah, me a Bruniana. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a not, tourist. Yeah. See? And then it's shock horror, like, whoa, hey. Oh, he's one of us. Hey, you're one of us. But why don't see? you see me like that from the jump? From the beginning. Because yeah. of the brothel and then your mind just turns. Mm -hmm. I got in a taxi with my friend. We were going, I didn't speak. So I was talking to, um, through, halfway through the journey, I was talking to my friend in English. Yeah. I could, I can already see the, the taxi driver's expression like. Hey, hey, there's, there's, there's a this, foreigner. Uh, who's this uh, Bruni, black Bruni? Yeah. Talking, talking. So anyway, we got to our destination. My my guy, he's a gar guy. They were speaking in gar. Okay. So he was like, "How much?" You know, and the guy was like, he turned to look at me. Oh. First. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, I think he said twenty. So my friend was like, twenty? Why? He said, no, and I'm not dealing with you, I'm dealing with her. Meanwhile, you are sitting in the front seat with the guy. You don't know if I've got money. Maybe I don't have money, he There's has the money. money. Yeah. Maybe he's paying. What goes, maybe I'm broke. Yeah. See? You know? Exactly. And he said, then, so they started barking and my friend was like, no, no, what do you mean? And then he was like, no, okay, let me speak to her. 
I so I switched it into tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, you don't need to speak to me. So someone sitting You're in front sitting of you. with him. Why do you need to yeah, speak to me? Yeah. Why? Because the brothel was coming in the English, so yeah. you throw your pound signs and your yeah. dollar yeah, signs. It's, it's active I got out of yeah. the car and said, speak to him. Bye. Good for you. Oh, thank you for, for, for such a job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's, that's how I get terrible. by in Ghana. It's really yeah. terrible. Right? You know? Okay. I, before I used to like cry and tear me. Oh, no. No, so Ghana will I, make you toughen up. Yeah, yeah you, but you I really do. Have when to. people come to me and they say that word to me, first of all, I tell them, Correction. you don't call me that. First of all, I'm your sister. Correction. And I'll tell you how. And then I show them a picture of my mom, and then I shouldn't have to show you a yeah. picture of my family. Yeah. But I show a picture of my mom, and they're like, then it oh, almost you're black. changes everything. But then it's I'll, made I'll crazy. Ask them, do you know our black history? No. no. Oh, honey, you uh, just, then you just, maybe you we, just, we really have to now, do it. Now, I have, now you, ha you, you chose to come here. You thought you were going to have some small time, and now I'm going to tell you about our black history. Unfortunately, we have to wrap this up a little bit. Yeah. I think yes, we're going to have to do a part two, yeah. actually. Yeah. Because, because there's we're going to talk about the great things. Yeah, yeah okay, you know, quick things. fire, quick oh, fire, okay. quick yeah. fire. Yeah. Right, great thing number one, quick. Oh, there's this tropical fruit everywhere quick fire number two great um, things yeah. i think the freedom i enjoy is, is unmeasurable i can walk anywhere exactly. and do anything i want another one same thing this is the most ghana is the 13th uh most safest country in all of this and i feel safe i feel safe and okay number two uh the fashion here is uh, uh, of course, yeah. check me out today. Oh, that's so cute. This is why we're even doing the interview yeah, in the evening yeah, because yeah. I we were supposed to do this in the day, but all this fabulousness took some time, <laughs> guys. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah. Oh guys, I mean this was quite yeah, brief-ish, nice. but I think you get the gist. But we will try and do a part two. Please, Maybe we need to go yeah, really yeah. a bit more nitty-gritty. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure people have got comments and questions about the business itself. Yes. The running of it, the other yes. challenges. There's so, other about the yeah, we're gonna about. meet up. We're yeah. gonna be up. This is just like just to say hi. So, if you're in Osu anytime, please pass by. Um, what the we, uh, we are we are not far from uh, Dankwa Runabout in Osu. Okay. okay. And uh, okay. you can also you can also find <laughs> us near. Um, former vegan relish or hot gossip nightclub cool yeah. but google maps is also there yeah, so yeah. but yeah check it out guys beautiful like i said i'm gonna insert the actual video of the place when i came to eat the surroundings etc but guys well done thank you so much for making thank it you. home thank especially so yeah. all the courage all the courage all the so challenges yeah on instagram, instagram. And Kiko, yes, YouTube, yes. you said. We have, our, we have two YouTube channels. We have Yaba Africa, which means we came back to Africa. Okay. And then we also have one for our business, which is Sikada GH Cuisine. Cool. Yeah. You're so you can welcome. check them out yeah. on all those platforms. And yeah, thank you for tuning in. And stay blessed, stay safe. And it's your girl, Ya, signing out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff. And mwah! See you Love soon. You. Love you guys. <laughs>